Heavenly Christ. Good evening. Good evening. So welcome to St. Jude's for the second Sunday of the Lent. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to my brothers and sisters to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray, O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by our word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. And when they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered, do not lay your hand on your boy, 
said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God. And since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son, as Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who, is, who also is at the right hand of God, 
who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the, Holy from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone, but Jesus along with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings for this second week of Lent invites us to have faith and to trust in God. Today in the first reading, we heard how Abraham listened to God, obeyed God, and trust the plan of God for his life. Prior to this moment of the life of Abraham, it's important that we realize that Abraham already had an experience of the love of God when he was first called by God to leave his land to a different land. He obeyed and he experienced the faithfulness of the Lord. And so he was able to trust. And more so, ultimately, when God gave him the son that he longed for, Isaac, with his wife, Sarah, in their old age, so he learned that God loved him, and he learned to trust in the Lord. It was by walking with the Lord in his life that Abraham learned to obey and to trust in God. And so Abraham, as we heard today, had faith in God and did not hesitate to offer his son because he knew that God will not fail him. Listening to God and obeying him he walked up that mountain together with his son. And because he did so, he was able to experience the love of God. He was able to see once again the faithfulness of the Lord for him and for his family. And the Lord provided the ram, but also gave him a blessing beyond all his hopes. He told him that his descendant will be as countless 
as the stars of the sky and the sand of the seashore. And in his descendant, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. In the gospel today, in a similar way, we heard how Jesus took Peter, John, and James up to the mountain. And they too have seen Jesus performing miracles. They've seen how Jesus was able to cure the sick, the multiplication of the loaves, and many other things. And so they trusted in Jesus Christ. They trusted that Jesus Christ knew what was the best thing for their lives. And so they walked up that mountain. And there, they saw the love of God. There, up in the mountains, they saw the transfiguration. Just as Abraham listened and obeyed God and encountered God's love, and faithfulness at the top of the mountain, so did Peter, James, and John walk up that mountain with Jesus Christ and encounter the love of God. All of us here have many mountains in our lives, many sufferings, events, things that happen to us that challenge our faith, like it happened to Abraham, like it happened to the apostles. Events that challenge our belief in a loving God but it's by walking with Christ in this journey of our lives that we are able to learn how to trust in the Lord, that we are able to learn how to put our lives in the hands of God. And so when we face these mountains, we are able to walk up those mountains that seem impossible to overcome. But with Christ we can. And once we are at the top, Alike Abraham, alike the apostles, we will see the glory of God. We will see that God is faithful to our lives, that God loves us. To have the wonderful experience of the love of God at the transfiguration, surely it helped Peter, John, and James in their doubts when following Jesus Christ, and especially when Jesus Christ was being persecuted when he was crucified at his passion. Surely that experience was unique in their lives, and it helped them. It strengthened their faith. And so this season of Lent is also a special time for each one of us, a time in which we are called to follow Jesus Christ, a time in which we are called to walk with him, to cry out to him, to listen to his voice, to have an experience of the love of God, so that one day we can make our own the words that St. Paul said today in the second reading, that we can truly live these words that we heard in the second reading, that we can truly cherish them in our hearts. St. Paul told us, if God is with us, who can be against us? If God is with us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Now let's proclaim our profession of faith, I believe, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten and Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten or made, conception should be the Father, through him all things were made, for us, men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was singled into the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. When our Lord was transfigured before Peter, James, and John, they saw the glory of God on the mountain. Let us seek God's favor for us in our prayers. For the Pope, our bishops, and all other church leaders, that they will lead us to the glory of our heavenly homeland by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. For the world, that the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence of the glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have not been able to attend Mass or Reconciliation because of the pandemic, that they may be healed through prayer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For all those who are sick and who are dying, and for those names written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have died, especially Tunia Nunyan, Marriott Whithorn, Mildred Stab, Elizabeth Boyle, Don Lee, and Susan Sorel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord God. For the repose of the soul of Ramona Willis, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, with grace and glory, you transform our lives through our prayers, strengthen us to come through the trials of this earthly life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for after he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. <laughs>
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the wonderful holiness. Make holy for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and ended willingly in his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as you celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church but throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all the clergy. I remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously. Grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
It's going to be the time for receiving the communion. Those who would like to receive the communion on the tongue, you may please come up to the center aisle after the Mass. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called into the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should be my own. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
For those who are at home, let us pray together the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart, and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. We have few announcements. Please be remain seated. As we are now in the season of Lent, we can find a schedule of Lenten activities in the bulletin and on the website. We also have a Lenten resources page on our website with links, videos, podcasts, children's resources, and more to help you and your family grow spiritually this Lenten season. As part of our Hope Eve ministry, we are producing Lent videos featuring reflections from our clergy, and also thoughts from some of our parishioners. 
These are being posted weekly on our website, YouTube, and Flocknote. If you are part of our Flocknote group, you should be getting daily material from Bishop Barron's Word on Fire ministry. See the website if you want to sign up. Father Edwin Leonard will be leading our parish mission this year on March 15 through 17 in this sanctuary. All services will be live streamed. The theme of the parish mission is Enter the Wilderness. All are invited, including children, and registration is not required. The Knights are offering Friday Lenten dinners to go every Friday during Lent. Each Friday, starting at 5.30 p.m., you can place your order in the reception area and then drive to the roundabout where the Knights will deliver your order to your vehicle. You can see the bulletin or website for the menu and prices. As well, Friday Stations of the Cross will begin at 6.30 p.m. The Scouts are hosting their annual mulch sale, which is their main source of revenue for the entire troop. The deadline to order mulch is March 9th. Delivery will be March 20 and 21. See the bulletin or website for details. If you would like to make an offering, you will notice we have collection boxes by the baptismal font and the true transepts. Thank you for your continued support of our parish, St. Jude. Please, bye. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for loving us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.